Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Inman, and you're now listening to the Word of Deliverance. Thank you so much for tuning into our program. I believe we've got a great program for you today. Michelle, uh, she's the host of our program today, and she's got some really great stuff. I want you to tell us, Michelle, where we're going here. I understand we've been in the parables this week about Matthew 13. These were very informative. And they were actually for the election of God. Mm -hmm. In other words, people that have been called of God before the foundation of the world. Right. So that means that every born-again believer actually that's called of God can learn a lot from these parables. Amen. And we pray that they learn enough from them that they can also be the chosen. Because mm -hmm. many are called, but, you know, few are chosen. Amen. So tell us what we're dealing with. One of the last parables in this 13th chapter, I understand, is where we're going today. Mm -hmm. And it talks about a scribe is like unto a householder. And uh, I believe we need to bring it out to the people how that he, out of his good treasures, bring forth things that are new and things of old. Now, the disciples said that they understood all these things. So, you know... Bring it on, and let's tell the people where we're at here. Yes, it actually says in verse 52 of Matthew chapter 13, Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasures things new and old. And, of course, this... A uh, person who is a, which is described, which is instructed the kingdom of heaven is someone that is taught in the kingdom of God, th those things that belonging to the kingdom of God, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you look up that word kingdom of heaven, it talks about the heaven, it talks about also the, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, okay, you're talking about this scribe that was like unto. Yes. He was like the householder in the kingdom of God. Now, mm -hmm. the scribe... If you look this up, it's a, it's a professional person that writes down the scriptures. Mm -hmm. He does it for a living. Right. So he has to know a whole lot of stuff. And here you find out that he says he's likened to a householder. Now, can you give the people a little bit of an idea of a householder here? I mean, this is something that means, if you look it up, it means this. It means that he is the head of the house. Right. Okay. So how does he fit into this picture? Because the Bible says that he uh, takes the householder and bring it forth out of his treasures. Tell us what his treasures are. Well, the treasure is kind of like um, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And um, we, you know, Christ, it talks about how Jesus in John 1.1 1, 1 is the word. And the word became flesh and, and dwelt among us. And so the treasures, we believe, is the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. And it's in us. So the word of God is a great treasure. Yes. But a lot of people don't have the knowledge because it says here that the householder, that the scribe is like him. Mm -hmm. In other words, he that's head of the house should be very instructed in the word of God and he should know a whole lot about it. Right. Everybody doesn't know a lot about the Bible and I mm -hmm. think we're living in one of the darkest hours this country has ever been in. Mm -hmm. I believe today that there's less truth and there's more churches than there's ever been. Amen. But I think there's less truth. And I think it's because just people have stopped seeking God. Mm -hmm. They don't have prayer meetings in the churches anymore. Right. They're going along with the world. You know how many times that we had prayer meetings when there wasn't nobody here but two or three people. Yeah. And a lot of times I had them by myself. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's still not a lot. Mm -hmm. But we do what we have to do. But you know, this is our life and this is what we do. So he's instructed in all the things of God, mm -hmm. and he brings forth things out of the new and the old, and this is out of his treasures he brings forth these things. Right. Tell us what the new and the old is and how we can kind of help the people with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we need to really tell them about this word. In our questions, number 14, we had a, a root word out of Strong's Bible Concordance, which 3100 which tells up about entrans to, intransitively, meaning to depend on your re relationship with the Holy Spirit. In other words, this, this uh, householder, mm -hmm. and this goes to every individual, if he don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, 
He's not going to bring anything out of the word of God because it all comes from Rhema. Right. Well, the Holy Ghost, according to 1 John chapter 2, verses 21, it is the Holy Spirit which and the anointing which teaches us all things and brings all things to our remembrance. And so if you don't have the Holy Ghost teaching you, then you can't have Rhema and you can't know the, th the things of God. Well, a lot of people don't understand Rhema. I remember back we had the Rhema Bible College back in the 70s and we thought that we didn't know no better. Mm -hmm. and we just got saved in the early 70s and early to mid 70s and we we thought they were great people so they said like Kenneth Hagin was you know at Rhema Bible College well I naturally I enrolled in it the first thing mm -hmm. you know but I was also in uh, Christ for the Nations in Dallas Bible College too so I learned a lot of things out of uh, Kenneth Hagin was good but some of the things was terribly bad you know so uh, I didn't know what that was about I just you know like eat the fish and spit out the bones yeah you know i kind of got away from that but the whole idea is here that if you don't have the holy spirit you don't have anything Let, let's give the people an example like 4487 is that the number i'm just comes off the top of my head first timothy chapter 6 no ephesians chapter 16 chapter 16 listen to me ephesians chapter uh chapter 6 if you look at this very carefully, you find out that verse 17 refers to what? Rhema. Rhema. When it talks about the word of God, sometimes it's interpreted in the Bible as logos. Other times it's interpreted as rhema. Mm -hmm. But when it's interpreted as rhema, Paul called it the actual sword of the spirit. Yes. Because this is what Jesus used when he was brought up by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Whenever Jesus said it is written. So using the word of God with the Holy Spirit, bringing this to you, makes it a sword. Yes. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people are not going to this level of it, and they don't understand these things, which are so important today. Right. And I believe that's why the Holy Spirit, he sends, it gives us the word to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. And I believe, as an example, when he says to get, bring things out of the old and new the Old and New is the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I would like to give an example of how even Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he says that these things are written for our, or actually 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 10, 1 Corinthians 10, he talks about these examples in yes, verse 6. Yes, chapter 10, verse 6, I'm sorry. Chapter 10, verse 6, he says, These things are written for our examples, that ye should not lust after the things as the Israelites had lusted after. And also, he used how in verses 1 through 4, he talked about how Moses and they were all baptized under Moses in the sea, and how they ate from the spiritual meat and drunk from the spiritual drink, and they, that spiritual rock, which was Christ. And he talks about that in verse 4 and how he compared the Old Testament with the New and how he showed us how it was related um, to Christ. It was Christ all the time. And even in Galatians, chapter, he talks about how he uses the allegory of um, Sarah being the free woman. You mean in Galatians, yeah. Yes, in Galatians, Sarah chapter being three. the free woman, yes. And Hagar being the bondwoman and how he related that to all that were under the flesh are in are not of God. But those that are free of Sarah are in Christ Jesus. Well, most people today, Michelle, especially the TBNers, you know, they stay in the Old Testament. And they are very seldom in the New Testament. But I think there's a story behind that, which I don't want to get into today. Mm -hmm. But I think that we need to learn how to put them together because that's what the apostles did. Yes. And we were to use them as an example because the Bible is written, uh, in the Bible is written many messianic scriptures mm -hmm. like Isaiah 53, 5 and Zechariah, Zephaniah. All these books are prophetic books these small books especially mm -hmm. and isaiah and ezekiel will have a lot in them too but i think if you learn how to put these together with the holy spirit you can get a whole lot of truth out of them and learn how to study right. many people today don't know how to study and they don't know how to bring forth the great treasures mm -hmm. i want you to tell us according to uh this why this is a great treasure 
Now, we know, we brought it out this week on our radio, that the great treasures are the Spirit of God that's within us. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says that the earthen vessel contains this treasure. That's us. The treasure is Christ yes. Jesus. Mm -hmm. But really, tell us why it is a treasure that people need to learn how to feed themselves with because without it, people can't grow. And today, people is falling away. Yes, well, Jesus is the word, like I said, and the word is life. And remember, it's the word. Um, we are cleansed by the word. In, in other words, you can use that as rhema through the uh, word of God that keeps that through the Holy Spirit that brings the word back to us and helps us to grow. And then if you noticed <coughs> also that go ahead. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, the word of God. Are you talking about in Ephesians 6, 17? Oh, or 6, 17. It talks about the sword of the spirit. Yeah. Okay. In Ephesians chapter 5, Michelle, it also talks about washed by the water of the word. Yes. So this is what cleanses us. Mm -hmm. We are saved by the blood of Jesus, but for a Christian to be cleansed, he has to have the word of God in him. Right. This is the Old Testament type of baptism where mm -hmm. they went into the, to the brass laver mm -hmm. and they had to take a bath that was between the temple Right. I mean, it was between the altar and, and, you know, the people. So they had to go through this process. Mm -hmm. And I look at people today that, I mean, I hear from them occasionally. We help some of the people with their Bible studies. But so many denominations today don't even hear the word of God in their church. Right. So how can they ever learn to study? They don't have anybody to teach them. I came up like that. Mm -hmm. We didn't have anybody to teach us. Today, you got the Church of the Christ, believe in water baptism will save you. Right. I mean, this is the most ridiculous thing mm -hmm. that I think you've ever heard of. And you got the apostolics that believe that Jesus has uh, his, uh, he's the father. Mm -hmm. You know, they never look at those. I mean, they actually talk about the end of Jesus Christ. Right. That but, after 1 Corinthians 15, 27 and 28, he'd never exist again. Mm -hmm. Is that trash or not? That's another Jesus. I mean, if you look at uh, John 17, Verse 24, what does it say? That's he was from the, he, G, the father loved him from the foundations of the world. Yeah, before the world was. Mm -hmm. And you look at G, John 17, verse 4. It also says that the same glory, Father, I had with you before the world was. Mm -hmm. For anybody to believe that Jesus is not eternal, they've never read the book of Hebrews chapter 7, which is, says that he's a type of Melchizedek who had no mother nor father, beginning or the end, mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ is eternal, right. and he's always been eternal. Yes. I mean, there's other scriptures that you can bring out. Uh, anybody who wants to know this can contact us. I'll be glad to help them with it. It's all in the book of Daniel, chapter mm -hmm. 7, verses 13, verses 9. Mm -hmm. talks about Jesus, the Son of God, mm -hmm. in Daniel chapter 3. Being in the fiery furnace with the, with the three Hebrew children. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're living in a time when people desperately need to learn how to study that out of the Old Testament and the New Testament, they can bring forth great treasures that will transform their life mm -hmm. and make them into being a great person in this time and in the world to come. Amen. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you shall what? Be my disciples. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. So shall you be my disciples. I believe there's many people today that are perishing, Michelle, because they don't know anything about the word. Mm -hmm. Some believing that they're homosexuals. Some believe they're lesbians and some believe that their children were just born this way because of this media that has all this bunch of lies that they're trying to put in people. Right. I want those under the sound of my voice to remember, stay with the scriptures. And I believe that you can do that. And if you're living in a place where there is no churches, get a good prayer life early in the morning and pray the Lord below down your foot, or down your footsteps. My name is Pastor Inman. You can contact me at 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue. 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue. Dayton, Ohio, 45404. You can email me at Pastor Inman at att.net. You can also call me at 937-235-0246. I hope you've got something out of our program. Remember, Jesus said you can know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You've been listening to the Word of Deliverance. Have a great day. <laughs>